Welcome to this video. This is going to be all about chapter nine in the National Electrical Codebook. And for reference, I am looking at the 2020 National Electrical Codebook, but this does apply for 2017, 2020, as well as 2023. In other words, this hasn't changed. We're gonna be looking at some very important tables here in a second, as well as highlighting the use and importance of Annex C. But first, we're gonna read just a little bit from the actual codebook. Of course, if you wanna see questions about what this video is gonna be talking about, you see I will be talking about sizing conduit and filling conduit, and that'll be my next video. So this will all tie together into that. So I'm gonna read from the code book now, but of course I'm not gonna read the entire thing because of plagiarism. Of course, straight away when we go to chapter nine in the code book, we see table one, and that is the percentage of the cross section of conduit and tubing for conductors and cables. We see it's pretty simple. On the left side, we have the number of conductors and or cables. So if we have one conductor cable, then we see on the right there, we have the cross-sectional area. So another word for that in the code book would be demand factor. If we have one conductor cable, we have a demand factor of 53%. So we're gonna be multiplying what we're dealing with, in this case, an area by 53% or 0.53. Here's where things get a little weird. We see if we have two cables, we're at 31%, okay? But then if we have over two, meaning three or more is another way to say that. They say a lot of things a little bit interestingly here, but it just makes you kind of think about it a little more. If you have over two conductors and or cables, then you are going to have the demand factor of 40%. Lucky for us, this is most of the time already in the tables that we're gonna be using. And all you have to do is look at the 40% column if you have over two wires or the other two columns that will fit what you might be working with as well as some additional information that we will highlight once we get there. Another thing to really take note of here on the first page of chapter nine is where it says notes to tables. And you see one through 10 here on this first page. And in fact, it does end there on number 10 on that page. So there's 10 there and we wanna look at number four and number eight. Of course, reading all of them is very important but we're gonna make use of number four and number eight. And these are two things that you don't just wanna look over you really wanna know this. Okay, so we're gonna look at the notes to tables number four. Where conduit or tubing nipples having a maximum length not to exceed 24 inches are installed between boxes, cabinets, and similar enclosures, the nipples shall be permitted to be filled 60% of their total cross-sectional area. In other words, when it mentions that there's gonna be a nipple, now you're more aware of what it is because they're defining it as something that's installed between the boxes, cabinets, and similar enclosures. So all that we gotta know is it's a section that's going to exist between boxes, cabinets, and similar enclosures, and it does include conduit or tubing nipples. So this is where they might get you because they might mention a conduit that's under 24 inches and that will be included in this, okay? But oftentimes they're gonna mention a nipple and they're gonna mention that size. Then if the nipple or conduit is under 24 inches, then it shall be permitted to be filled 60%. Okay, and like I mentioned, the tables that we're gonna be looking at will have those certain percentages mathed into it and you will see a 60% column here in a second. So just know that these things are good to be aware about, but you'll be reminded of them when you're looking at the table, because you're going to associate them with the number. You're gonna see the 60%, you're gonna know, okay, that's with the nipples. And then you have the 40%, which is over two wires, but the column will literally say over two wires. Under it, it will say 40%. So it's clear as day, and that's why it's good to just go over these things, because you're gonna be reminded of them when you're solving these problems that use these tables and this chapter. Okay, the next really important one is going to be the notes to tables number eight, where bare conductors are permitted by other sections of this code, the dimensions for bare conductors in table eight shall be permitted. So in other words, when you have a question, it's talking about bare conductors, then you're able to use chapter nine, table eight, to figure out your dimensions whether that's circular mills or we will see square inches as well. And that'll come in handy because you'll get a question that will mention a bare conductor when you're going to want to do conduit fill, for example. And then you're gonna think, okay, well, what size is that going to be? Because you have all these different types of conductors. You have THWN, THHN, but then they say bare conductor, okay? So that's where chapter nine, table eight comes in. Oftentimes you're gonna be using 
the square inches. But it's also good to know that chapter 9 table 8 is going to also be the table you're going to just use for circular mills when you want to find out the circular mills of your actual wire. Okay, so let's go in order. I'm still going to be on this first page here. I'm just going to mention the last thing here is that we have table 2 and it's the radius of conduit and tubing bends. So on the left, you have your metric designator, but more commonly, you're gonna have your trade size, which your trade size is always gonna go by an inch rating. So when it says half, that's gonna be a half inch, but it's going to be half inch trade size. So we see the trade size, but we know that's going to be in inches. And then next to that, we see it says one shot and full shoe benders. So this is when they're talking about a conduit bender that you have to use when you're bending conduit. And this might show up on a question. I've seen this before. Okay, next going in order, we see chapter nine, table four. We're gonna think of chapter nine, table four as conduit sizes. When we wanna find the size of conduit that we're working with, we're gonna use chapter nine, table four. Here, we're gonna see two things. We're gonna see the trade size, so the actual outer diameter of the conduit that we're working with. What size conduit is this? Is this a two inch conduit? And if it is a two inch conduit, then how much can we fill this conduit? And that's where then we see next to this, we see the over two wires, 40%. So we see that if it is over two wires, we can fill the conduit 40% and it's already mathed out for us. So if we are looking at the two inch trade size and we're gonna be looking at table four, the very first one, let's say it says EMT and we're gonna look at two inch again and we're gonna look over next to that where it says over two wires, 40% and where it says the square inches, and we see 1.342. So we know that we're going to be able to fill this 1.342 inches, and this is really gonna come in handy. Again, if we had the under 24 inch conduit, or more commonly, a nipple that is under 24 inches, then we're going to see the 60% column. Next to that, we see the one wire and then two wire column. So if we're only working with one or two wires, and then we see the nominal and terminal diameter. And then next to that, we see the total area, 100%. So pay attention to that. It might ask you, what is the total area of this actual conduit? Okay, so now we know how to use table four briefly. Of course, you're gonna learn a lot more when you actually go through practice questions and real life examples, which you'll see in those videos, like the sizing conduit and the conduit fill. So make sure you watch those videos to actually solidify this because it's gonna be hard to remember things when you kind of just hear the boring information, but this boring information is really gonna help you and prepare you for these questions. Then we also see that with chapter nine, table four, this is going to be for certain types of conduit. So we were looking at EMT, we see below that we have ENT, then we have FMC. Of course, if you're not familiar with what these mean, familiarize yourself with it, flexible metallic conduit, electrical non-metallic conduit, electrical metallic conduit. And then we have some less common types, but if you actually go on the next page, we see some more common types, especially with the PVC schedule 40 and also schedule 80. And we see actually first we see schedule 80 here on the left side page. And then on the right, we see schedule 40. We also see type A PVC and type EB PVC, but again, those are less common. And they do a good job asking you pretty realistic questions for the most part which is good. Going over to the next page, we see we're already at table five of chapter nine. We're gonna think of this as conductor size. So we wanna find the size of our conductor that we're working with. And specifically, we can see that we're working with RHW, RHW2, THHN, THWN, all these different types of wire. Okay, this also enlightens us to the fact that if we're going to have copper or aluminum, there's not going to be a difference in wire size. There is of course a difference in opacity. And with that, you will choose a different sheathing, but this is already accommodating for your different sheathing. So you already have your different type of wire sheathing in your different type of wire because of that. And now you're gonna be using this table and you're gonna use it whether it says copper or aluminum because it won't matter what size it is for copper and aluminum with this table because you're just thinking about the exact size, whether you're using copper or aluminum, and it's not going to make a difference in the size of it. So it's something you're going to have to comprehend here because they're going to say, oh, it's this aluminum, this copper, and you're going to go on this table and you're not going to see where it says copper aluminum, 
but that is already going to be figured out here in the wire type that you're going to be using. Okay, so now we know how to size certain types of wire where they're telling us, okay, we have three THN and we have four THWN2. And then you say, okay, that sounds kind of crazy. But now you know you go to chapter nine, table five, and then right there, you're gonna see your size, AWG or KC mil. So you have, let's say, your 14 gauge, or you can go to your two aught, or you can go to 500 KC mil. And then on the right hand side, you're gonna see millimeters squared, but what's more common is you're gonna have your inches squared or your square inches. And that is where it says under the first column, approximate area. Okay, so we're gonna flip a few pages. We see that table five goes on for a little bit. And then we're gonna see table eight, which is another one of the tables I really wanted to highlight. We will see that we have our size in AWG, okay? And then next to that, we have the millimeters squared. But what's more important is next to that, we have the circular mills. Here's where we can size circular mills from our wire. Then if they're asking us about bare copper, we can see that it says diameter, and then it says diameter again, then it says area. So we want to see where it says area, and it's under where it says the overall area, and we see the inches squared. Okay, that's where we're going to look at for our bare copper if we want to use bare copper and we're doing a problem that's going to include using the square inches and we're sizing conductors and we're doing conduit fill or something or we're sizing conduit. Now we know how we're going to include the size of those certain bare conductors in those problems. Make sure to go through the rest of chapter nine on your own because this is just going over the really main things that we're going to be using all the time, but everything else in chapter nine is also very useful. Of course, everything in the whole book is useful and it's not good to try to tackle it all at once. So that's not my advice. My advice is to go through the whole chapter thoroughly and to really understand what is in it. Okay, the next table that's gonna come in handy is Annex C. This is going to be a series of tables that is going to tell us that if we have multiple conductors that are the same size and the same wire type, how many of those conductors can we fit in a certain type of conduit? So it's a big shortcut. Okay, now let's say there's a question. They say you have six 14 gauge THHN conductors. And what size EMT conduit will work? Okay, Annex C here. We're gonna look at the first table conveniently, which is EMT is why I chose this. We're gonna see THHN we're gonna to go to 14 gauge, and we see a blank spot for 3 8 inch, so that means it doesn't exist. After that, we see the number 12 under the half inch column. So that's telling us that here for EMT, our first size is half inch. That's our smallest size that we can work with. And with this smallest size that we're working with, we see that we can fit 12 number 14 THHN conductors in there. And I said that we wanted to fit six, so we see that our smallest size half inch perfectly accommodates for that, we have room for six more. So it also answered that question, okay? How many more could you fit in there? Now we know six. It's very simple with this table because it's very simple numbers. You're no longer thinking of inches squared, decimal points. You're thinking very simple. How many conductors, what wire type, also what size of the wire, and then what conduit you're trying to fit that in specifically. Okay, so that's it for this video. Those are four tables that come in handy, especially when you're thinking about sizing conduit, when you think about filling conduit. So make sure to check out those next videos that will link into all this. You're gonna see questions that will go from simple things, like certain things I've mentioned in this video, to more complex things, like let's say, you already have one THWN number 14 gauge conductor inside of a two inch EMT conduit. Well, how many more 10 gauge THHN conductors can you fit in that same conduit? And this is very simple and straightforward. And you're gonna see that once we solve a few of these, it'll be super easy. Okay, so give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. Until next time, take care and goodbye.